Hey all, welcome back to the channel. It's Taylor, good to see you. I hope you all are doing well. Today I have a complete build video for you guys featuring a small form factor case. This is an ITX case and I have a 4070 Ti here. Gonna be putting a 7800X3D in there with a two terabyte NVMe. Got a B650i motherboard and DDR5 RAM. I'm gonna be doing a complete build of this from start to finish, and then I'm gonna benchmark it and see how well it performs in terms of FPS and heat. So if that sounds like fun, which it should be pretty fun, let's go ahead and get started. But first, this video is not sponsored and all links in the description are not affiliate links. This video is funded completely by myself with my own money, so your support is greatly appreciated. If you like the video, leave a like, and if you wanna see more videos, hit that subscribe button. Moving the hardware aside for a moment, I want to talk about the case first and drop everything in the process. Here is the case, and this is a Cooler Master NR200P. I believe that's correct. Yes. And it is the Max Edition. So what does Max Edition mean? Max Edition means that this comes with a all-in-one 120 millimeter. Actually, it's 240 millimeter because it's got two 120s at the top, but it's an all-in-one cooler at the top. Um, it comes pre-shipped and installed in this case, and it also includes an 850 watt power supply. Unfortunately, it's not an ATX 3.0 power supply, so we will have to use an adapter with this 4070 Ti, but I mean, that's why I got this uh, Corsair one here. It's braided, and so is the power supply cables in the NR200, so that should look consistent with the aesthetic of it all. But yeah, that's the case. It's got a lot of um, side panels that come off, bottom panels that come off, the, uh, the whole front cover comes off, and it has a vertically mounted GPU instead of a horizontal mounted GPU. So with the Max, they actually had to change the design of this to kind of lower the motherboard and everything. So it doesn't support a horizontal GPU. So it has to be vertical. I've never done a vertical GPU build before, so that's gonna be new to me. And I've never done an ITX build before ever in like 15 years of building computers. So this whole process is going to be new to me too. We'll come back to the case in a second. For now in the build process, we need to start preparing the motherboard. So like I said, this is the B650i. It is an ITX motherboard. It is by Gigabyte and it is the Aurorus version of the motherboard. This is a B650i Ultra. And I actually got this motherboard on clearance from Micro Center, and I paid $216 for this motherboard, and this motherboard usually retails for $270. So it's all about getting those deals, guys. Don't pay full price for these things. If you can get a deal, get it. Um, if you absolutely need it, then you know you might have to pay full price, but look out for those deals because that is how you're gonna save money and build awesome computers. So this is the B650i Ultra, and it is a tiny little guy. Look at that thing. Like, this is the palm of my hand, and that is the motherboard. Absolutely tiny, tiny motherboard. This right here is where the NVMe drives go. They kind of stack on top of each other, which is interesting. I've never seen that before. It actually supports a third one, too, in the back here, if you want. And yeah, it's got two slots for RAM. Here's where you put in your front panel headers and it's just a tiny little motherboard. Now, since this was clearance, it came with almost everything, but it didn't come with fan headers, which I don't think I'm gonna need for this particular build, but I have tried to contact Gigabyte about this, sending two emails and actually calling them, and the whole experience is just kinda like rubbed me the wrong way. It hasn't been great. The phone call was pretty unprofessional. I still have no idea if I'm getting the fan headers even though I verified my address and proof of purchase in an email for this and they said that they would send them out but I have not received a follow-up email, I have not received a follow-up phone call, no communication, nothing. So that has kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, you might not experience that with Gigabyte but I have and it is certainly a downside of this whole experience for sure. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start assembling this motherboard with our CPU and RAM, get this guy all prepared. Real quick before I get started with the build, I just wanted to go over the I.O. on this motherboard. So here is the I.O. It's got a pretty healthy bit. We have a display port and an HDMI up top, a couple USB 3s, a regular USB 2 and a BIOS USB. 
got a USB-C here, which also acts as a display port, so that's pretty nice. USB 3.2s down here, 2.5 gigabit ethernet jack, a Q flash button, and this even supports Wi-Fi 6. The RAM I'm installing here is G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB. It's not low profile, it's full heights, but that shouldn't be a problem with this build. Next up, it's time to install the CPU. So just gotta open the lever here, pull that back, open up the slot like so. And there is our pin grid array. Gonna go ahead and line the CPU up so that the arrow is pointing to the arrow on the CPU. Just kind of drop it in like that and it's secure. I'm using the Ryzen 7800X3D for this. Go ahead and once that's in there, drop the cover again. And now just push down on the latch. This part is always kind of scary, but just do that. The cover will pop off. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of the lever. And then just, that's it. Now it's installed. Now it's time to get this into the case. Now that the side panel is removed, you can see that we have our all-in-one cooler here, which we'll be applying our paste to. There's our power supply, and here is the fans for the all-in-one cooler. All right, here's where I'm at. I have the power in. Like I said, it's not gonna provide much of a benefit here because I still have to like put this in, and then there's the USB 3 and audio to put in. So I'm just gonna put the motherboard in there. It looks like it has standoffs already in there, which is really convenient. So I just pretty much need to place it in there, put the screws in and screw it down. I'm still not sure where the front panel audio goes, but I have this little card here. This is a card that houses the connectors for the front panel connections, which is this thing here. So it's kind of interesting how they package everything up to be like super tiny. There's the front panel connectors. So this is going to plug into that. And then I'm going to be able to plug in the actual front panel headers here, like power switch, hard drive, all that good stuff. Keep track of that order and then take this off. Here's a look at this thing. So there's the heatsink, and then the first NVMe is there. And then this is held in by like a, looks like a proprietary power connector. So just be aware of that. You kinda gotta lift up until that's undone. And then, oh, there's two of them actually. And then here is the second NVMe. So they're kinda like sandwiched on top of each other and that's how they make use of the space. That SSD is in there. I got it with this little latch. These toolless latches are so convenient. You just like flip it up like this and it's up and then you put it down and you just push it down. It's locked in, easy as that. So far so good. Got the motherboard screwed down. Everything is connected to the motherboard. The only thing I gotta do is plug in the CPU cooler here which does not have thermal paste pre-applied, pre which I really like to see. I don't like pre-applied thermal paste, always have to wipe it off. And now's a good time to take a break, drink some water. That's good. If you're having fun so far, you know, like the video. And if you're having a lot of fun, subscribe. These things were positioned inward, so the little clips and the grooves, they weren't catching. So I positioned them outward and I'm gonna see how that works and see if we have better results this time this down tightening it everything is in so i'm going to show you guys and here we have the cpu cooler attached they do use these little clips with these thumb screws just gotta rotate them it's kind of weird because it's not a crisscross pattern it's like a you clip it on and then put it down with these thumb screws but it's in there there's a little fan power and now the only thing left to do is install the graphics card. We've got our riser cable here. So it's gonna go like in those first two ones. 
all bolted in here to the graphics card and that is going to lay on this. Okay. All right, here's what I got so far. Be sure you put it in horizontally. It will tell you that's just how to take the plate off. But there is the graphics card installed. And this was a bit of a challenge too, because at first I was putting it horizontally, but that's my bad, don't do that. Be sure you put it in like this way, like flat. And yeah, it was a bit of a tight squeeze. Here's the PCI connectors. They're just squeezing past there, but honestly, that's plenty of clearance. I just need to get these uh, extender cables here and put them on because this uses that like 12 pin connector. I got everything connected. There is the 12 pin connector. I ended up having to use the one that came with the graphics card because this Corsair one, it connects to Corsair power supplies, which I did not realize there's a power supply connector there, not a PCI adapter like I needed here. So I needed to connect that to that. This did click in, so I heard it click, so it should be good, even though it makes me nervous. I usually deal with ATX3 power supplies, uh, so this is new. Okay, so I had to redo this a bit. There was this connector here, which was kind of holding everything together as far as the front panel connectors went, but that didn't really sit well with what it required. So I needed to plug these in custom because it had certain requirements for like the power switch. Power switch is supposed to go over there. So there's that right there. That's how I have it set up. So now let's give this a shot and see if this works. See if it turns on. Got fan spinning, it's on display port. Got a keyboard light up. That's pretty good. Oh, well, it's because it's connected. There is the boot screen, awesome. New CPU installed and the FTPM is corrupted. Okay, so this is a good start. Press Y here, sounds good. There's the BIOS, I wonder what version we're on. F6B, I actually think that is the latest one, which should be really convenient. That means that's that our 7800X3D already has the proper SOC vCore applied and the fix is applied. It's picking up both the RAMs. I think everything is done now. Just gotta install Windows and get some games running on this to see how it performs. Something I just noticed was that the front or the top radiator fans weren't spinning and that's because I never plugged in the cable. So uh, don't do that. Definitely plug this in or else your fans aren't gonna spin. Surprisingly, the CPU is still staying pretty cool. At this point, I am actually stuck because this takes the system fan header, which is right there, that little thing, and I need the connector that Gigabyte is not giving me. All right, I was able to get some fan header cables that I found online. These are not from Gigabyte, but I did get an update from Gigabyte. I was able to get in contact with a rep today that was very helpful. So Brian, if you're watching this, thank you so much. They're sending one out. And for now, I'm gonna use this fan header. So let's get those radiator fans hooked up and see if they work. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, it was like a little twist tie that was stuck in there. All right, fans are spinning now. I finally have the PC up and running and here I have Baldur's Gate 3 running, which is a pretty intensive game. I have the GPU running at 100% and CPU is at 29. And as far as settings go, everything is maxed out. 2560 by 1440, everything ultra. And right now I have the mesh panel on the side. So, just running around here in the main starting area, you can see that our temperature, both the CPU and GPU are hovering around 71 degrees Celsius. And I've had this game running for about 40 minutes now, just in this area, just to kind of get it saturated with heat. And this is kind of what we're resting at here. So between 69 and 72 degrees Celsius. And those temperatures are staying pretty in sync, surprisingly, which, under 75 degrees Celsius, 
that is uh, pretty good here, especially given the size of this case. So um, let's see how it does with the windowed side panel on there. All right, got the windowed side panel on there now, which looks absolutely amazing. Let's see how it affected the temperatures. So it looks like our GPU is definitely running a bit hotter at 76 degrees Celsius and the CPU is starting to creep up to at 75. It looks like they're both staying pretty much in sync though. Hopping into Diablo 4, I have all the settings still at the max. DLSS is off and running at 1440p. Looks like getting similar temperatures with the mesh panel on in Diablo 4, so 67 degrees Celsius on the CPU and 69 degrees Celsius on the GPU and getting around 180 frames per second, which is not bad. And the system is pretty quiet. Now I have the window side panel on in Diablo 4, same settings and getting about 69 on the CPU and 72, 73 on the GPU. So a slight increase on that, not as much of an increase as we saw on Boulder's Gate 3, but um, just a slight increase there, which is to be expected because there's less airflow there, but you do get a beautiful side panel and the system is still pretty quiet. All right, I installed the NF-A12 inside the case here. I just put it right here. It only has a fan header for one fan. So I have it intaking from the bottom here and this kind of puts some air right where the SSD is on the graphics card is going to lay. So that might help with some thermals there. And then there's the fan header uh, right in there. So plugged into there via the adapter and I have a helper making sure that I don't lose any of my screws. She is inspecting it and I think it passes inspection. Now with the fan in, I'm back in Boulder's Gate 3 and it looks like it's affecting the CPU the most. Like the CPU goes down to about 63 when that fan starts to ramp up and the GPU is at 69, which I believe is what it was at before, if not maybe a couple degrees lower, but fans ramping up and you can see that the CPU is dropping, whereas before it was hovering around 70 degrees. So there's a little bit of performance there with the mesh. Let's see what it looks like with the window on. I've had the window on for a couple minutes here and given the system time to really saturate with heat. And it looks like our GPU is a little cooler than before. It's at 74, 75 degrees Celsius, but it looks like it's making the most impact to the CPU at 67. Whereas before, without that little fan at the bottom, it was definitely in the 70 range along with the graphics card. So it's keeping our CPU a little cooler. And the system is a little louder with the fan, but still nothing that would be bothersome with like gaming without a headset. Now for the big question, how much did all of this cost? So everything from the case to the graphics card, to the fan, to the processor, to the RAM, to the NVMe, what was the total price of everything that went into this case? So everything was pretty much gotten on a deal if possible and over a period of time. It wasn't just a lump sum purchase. And with all the deals and time, the total purchase price came out to $2,049.28. That's not including tax. So $2,049.28 for everything to make this build possible. And for a quick size comparison for y'all, got an Xbox controller next to the case there and Nova's helping out with the dimensions compared to a full-size cat. I really like this case. For a first-time ITX build, this has been so awesome. It is so convenient having the all-in-one cooler and the power supply built into the case. It just made building so much easier. Didn't have to shorten cables. All the cables were the right length. So if you're a first-time ITX builder, I highly recommend this. This is awesome. The system is tiny, it is compact, and it's fairly lightweight. It also doesn't get too hot. The thermals are pretty well managed, so I am pretty impressed. And there's a good bit of power with that 4070 Ti. One thing I do wanna point out though, is that if you are planning on 
having like a mobile kind of desktop setup, the mesh panel is a lot lighter than the glass panel. This is much heavier. So if you're really gonna transport it around and you want the lightest weight possible, go with the mesh panel. And then if you want the aesthetics, go ahead and put on that glass side panel. Let me know your thoughts. I'd be interested to hear them. And if you like the video, leave a like. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate y'all and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.